The engine in question is 80 pounds of prime British engineering, which came to us totally seized. Last time round, me and Alan stripped it down to its bare components. Yes! Since then, those components have undergone a radical transformation. Well, we've had all the parts vapour blasted. They're all nice and clean now. And the, uh, the cylinder, I've done the rebore, I've got a new piston. It's got new big end rollers, so that's got no play. And the cylinder head's been all reconditioned, vapour blasted. Valves, new valves, all ground in, all ready to go back together. The Gold Star engine has six major parts, held together by 50-odd nuts and bolts. Alan's task for today is to put those parts together in exactly the right order. The first thing to go in is the oil pump, a small but vital part of the engine, held in place by four bolts. Then Alan goes from little to large, getting ready to insert the crankshaft, first by lubricating it with special grease and then by prepping the crankcases. So the first thing we're going to do is put some gasket seal around this crankcase joint here. So when we put the crankshaft in, I can lower that case on, directly on, and put in four bolts. And that's the bottom end, like assembled then. You don't need much, you need just enough. The sealant is a silicon-based compound, which ensures that the two surfaces fit together to stop any oil from leaking. Now we can lay the crankshaft in. The crankshaft is the heart of the engine, transforming the vertical movement of the pistons into rotary motion. It's crucial that it fits perfectly. That's it. And then this will go like that. Compared to Alan's own marvellous creations, the BSA's engine is relatively simple, but it still has to be assembled precisely and systematically. Notches and dots on the camshafts indicate how they line up with the crankshaft. Nuts and bolts have to be torqued down evenly. And at every stage, Alan tests the components to make sure they're running smoothly. That feels really nice now, it's a big improvement than when we rotated that when Henry was here. If it starts first kick, I'll be pleased. Maybe second at the max. The next major task is to attach the piston and the barrel. Alan warms the metal with a blowtorch to make it easier to insert the gudgeon pin, which holds the piston in place. A bit more. Right, that should do. So hopefully now, this will just slide in beautifully. There you go, let's see. It's not quite so easy, though, to get the barrel on. And the trick is not to force anything. There we go. That's so now the piston should come up and down. People do make mistakes when they're making engines, building engines. It doesn't always go tick tock together. Quite often you build it three times, especially if it's the first time you've done it. The thing is not to force anything. If something's not right, just stop and think something's not right, take it apart and go back again. The worst thing you can do is keep tightening the nut and thinking it's going to go down when it's not. So, but anyway, we'll continue with these nuts. After a lot more fitting and fiddling, the last major part goes on the rocker cover. Alan's mechanical mascot, Charlie Weaver, gives the customary toast, and five hours after he started, the assembly is done. Basically, that's the engine um, assembled. I have actually got the carburetor here, which I've built, but I won't bolt that on because it'll get in the way fit in the dynamo, and we can fit that on back at Henry's when we build the bike. So that's the engine finished, it's all assembled. Quite a relatively straightforward task, I'd say.